what do you do? Whatever way you want to introduce yourself. Okay, um, hi, I'm Minaji. Um, I'm a freelance photographer and videographer. And on my free time, um, I love to explore and shoot, specifically in the field of rooftopping. rooftopping and how did you get into it slash find out about it what was the experience how did you feel before and after and what were your thoughts um so i first started in 2017 um i was like in a period of life where i was just trying to find myself and um i was following a bunch of uh rooftoppers from hong kong at that time on instagram and i was like this is something i've always wanted to do it looks cool i want to go try it so I went out to like this like 10 story parking deck um, and that was like my first like rooftopping experience. I, I don't remember the other parts of the question. Oh, so, um, what was the experience? How did it feel before and after? Um, so before I was pretty like, it wasn't like I was nervous. Um, it was just more like I was excited because it was like something new. Um, and then like you know everybody who rooftops they do like these dangles they like sit on the edge and everything so it was like i wanted to do that too um and like initially like i was like a little bit hesitant but it was like i also didn't want to hold myself back from experiencing everything so um so yeah i just kind of went for it and like it honestly just felt great like that first time so what is rooftopping exactly how would you define it so rooftopping is um, basically just like finding some way to get to the roof of any building or just like to climb up some structure um, just to experience things from above. Um, it also involves like climbing cranes, um, like walking on ledges and things like that. A little uh, things that are a lot of people consider risky um, and a lot of people would not do. Um, but yeah. Is it different from urban exploring? If so, what is it urban exploring? Uh, so rooftopping falls under the category of urban exploration. So urban exploration is basically just like exploring man-made structures, um, whether that's abandonments or like sewers and tunnels, underground, like train tunnels, um, drains, um, uh, construction sites, you know, other like finished buildings and things like that, climbing bridges, um, climbing like radio towers and like stuff like that. Um, so these all kind of like fall into that same category. Um, I think like there's different levels of urban exploration. There's people who kind of do it like more safely, like they get permission to go explore spots um, and they, they like don't like do anything to open up spots they'll seek permission or they'll wait for it to be open and then there's folks who kind of just like will find their way into any spot at all like at any cost you know what i mean like they'll lock pick or they'll you know find some way to open doors or something like that um so there's like two different like opposite ends of the spectrum but they're all considered like urban exploration really Um, so the red shoes is basically just like honestly like my signature right um, it's like if I have these on it's like I'm about to go do something you know what I mean like I mean business um, and it's kind of just like because like initially like I I wasn't showing my face um, and I never really wanted people to know who I was um, so like that red shoe was kind of like all right, I can recognize this person, this explorer, by her shoes because they always have that, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of like how it started. And also, like red just looks great in pictures, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So you've gotten recognized on TikTok. So how does rooftopping play a part in social media? Do you think it's a vital part of rooftopping social media? Um. I don't think that social media is a vital part in rooftopping. I think like a lot of people who do these kinds of things want some sort of community and social media has helped us find that community. 
but there's still like a lot of people who just like aren't public with what they do they have like private accounts or they just don't post anything anywhere um, because it is like a risky field um, there could be like a lot of legal consequences um, so there's a, there's like a lot of people who go out and explore but they just don't post anything and like stay low-key and just stick to like their friends and like find some other way to find community um, but then like a, I feel like a lot of people who do like post on social media um, do so because like they just want to interact with the rest of the rooftoping or urban exploration community around the world um, my purpose specifically for being on social media because um, I only really started like posting more on social media within like the last year and being more about like my identity and like my experiences while exploring um, within the last year my goal with that was just to kind of use my experiences in a in a positive way um, to kind of change the way like people view me and view people like me whether people like me are Muslim or Muslim women or minorities or other explorers you know um, and just kind of like to just just change how people view us you know No, no, because like, I have to like always keep myself in check, right? I don't ever want to do something because I have a certain number of followers um, because this was never, I never started to do this for anybody else. I never started because I wanted to show anybody else. I started for myself um, to find myself and I, and I reached that goal, you know, but, and now like it's like, I don't really ever put anything out unless I feel like I can use it in some way that's positive or beneficial. Um, so yeah, like that whole like you put something out on social media and you get like a really short like serotonin boost and I am guilty of that sometimes, you know, but like at the same time, like I always try to keep myself in check. I don't want to ever put something out because it would get me more attention um, or like because my followers are asking for something, you know. Um, because that could also get me in a lot of trouble um, and like I always want to bring come back to like okay why am I doing this what are what are my intentions you know um, so with rooftoping there's always complications some that outsiders can see without ever experiencing it what are some complications that you face um, I think like a lot of people when they look at rooftoppers they just see the end result right they see like the dangles, the hanging over the side of the building, um, like the final product, the view that comes with it, like the whole thrill and adrenaline and all of that, you know, experience that comes with the heights. Um, but they don't see like how difficult some of these places are to get up to. Um, they don't hear about the legal consequences that like exploring has. Um, a lot of explorers don't talk about it publicly um, but like, you know, a lot of explorers have had like some major legal issues. Um, a lot, some explorers have faced death, you know, um, and that's also not something that's very frequently talked about. Um, and some explorers have like, you know, faced injury and things like that too. Um, so like that is definitely not talked about. That is not seen. Um, and people don't really think about that. They only just see the end product, but they don't really, they don't really care to ask like, how did, like, why would you do something like this? Or how, how does one go about doing something like this? Unless they're specifically like, I want to try this. Can you tell me how? Like, it's a little bit different than, you know, like, what are the different, like, what are the challenges with getting on top of a building? You know what I mean? Like, they don't ask those kinds of critical questions. Well, before I kind of, before I became public, um, like you go into every explore like mentally prepared, like this could either be like your last explore, you know, um, or the last time you kind of see like daylight. 
or um or like you could like land into some serious trouble for it like you never know you never know um and you could even like go out come out from that explore all good but face something maybe a week or a month or a year later for something that you did you know um so that's like kind of like always just like that like just mental preparation like you have to have um going into this field um I lost my train of thought. <laughs> has, that, has anything like that ever happened to you? Like, have you ever been caught or what? How did you deal with it? You um, yeah, I've been caught a lot of times. <laughs> um, not proud of any of it. Um, most of it weren't, most of them weren't entirely my fault either. Um, but it's okay, you know, whatever happens, happens for the best. Um, I've had like authority figures show up at my house door my parents are like, what is going on, you know? Um, and like, I've had like my camera gear confiscated and things like that. Um, so like, this is just, this is just part of the game. This is just what it is. You have to go in prepared that, you know, you probably might need a lawyer at some point. Um, detectives might show up at your house, you know? Um, you might be taken in at some point for something you did like years ago, you know what I mean? Like you never know. Um, yeah. <laughs> what What do you feel when you're up there? Why do you want to continue? If so, doing this and for how long? Um, honestly, when I'm up there, I feel like I feel more than anything. I feel peace. It's like a certain level of like calm that I don't really experience anywhere else. Um, and that's I feel like it's largely because like this hobby like has it's like the only time I really feel like present in the present um, I'm not like dwelling on things that have happened in the past I'm not stressing about things that might or may not happen in the future um, I'm like actually truly living in the present like I feel alive I feel calm I feel closer to God um, and like that's like the biggest feeling that I get from it um, there's like time to like when I'm just up there like waiting for like sunrise especially there's just like time to just like sit and just like step back and step away from like the rest of life and just kind of reflect and just kind of like take in the view and just like kind of like be one with yourself you know be one with yourself and your creator you know um so I'm sorry I, I forgot the second part of the question So I feel like I got what I intended to get going in like years ago. I feel like I reached that. I found myself, I found my faith, um, but I feel like, and I, there was a point where I did step back from it. I wasn't planning on continuing. Um, and this was after I had gotten like my camera gear confiscated and was going through a lot of other personal things. Um, but I feel like I've been given a really unique opportunity, like literally like, you know, one in a million kind of doing this. Um, and I, I would feel kind of wrong and kind of guilty if I didn't use this position that I had. Like, I'm not saying like I have like, so like a ton of followers or anything or like any sort of influence, but I feel like I'm in a very unique position. Um, and I want to be able to use this position to kind of change the world. I don't exactly know how um, I'm going to be doing that, but that is the goal now. Um, and I feel like I'm just going to try really hard to, to make that happen until I can't anymore, until I reach like the next phase of life, like maybe get married or have kids, right? I don't see myself doing that if there's a baby in the picture. Um, it's too risky, <laughs> you know? Um, so yeah. For you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so with my personality, 
I um, I feel like I developed a lot of self-confidence um, and like just a greater sense of like better understanding like who I am as a person, what my values are, what I believe in. Um, and I feel like I feel like you don't really know those things at a deeper level until like you're face to face with a really critical situation and like rooftoping has kind of helped me like put has like put me in those critical situations that have forced me to kind of like better understand my values my personality my goals in life my beliefs um so that but also um I feel like I've also become more vocal like as my self-confidence has increased I feel like I've become more vocal and unapologetic about my identity um, and just being able to use that identity to speak up for other people like me so um, I'm not sure if you answered this but like how has it created a relationship with the people around you like how has it changed it's definitely changed the relationship with people around me um when i first started um i didn't really notice any difference it was just more like wow this is amazing this is cool but as i got deeper into it and like i was doing it like every weekend for like a good year or two years um just like not just rooftops but like exploring in other ways as well abandonments and other things um I started to feel like a disconnect from like everybody else <laughs> um, like people are out here just like um, like no offense to anybody you know what I mean but like some people like are out here like they just go shopping for fun or or like you know lunch with friends is like the biggest thing in their life and like that's the only way they know how to have fun you know what I mean um, or like they just turn to other things right but I feel like this ex ex like this experience has really just like pulled me out of a lot of like the materialism of our life that is like encouraged in our life um, like honestly I used to be like a shopaholic before I started like completely like super like shopping like left and right and just like but like this experience like rooftopping has actually like really like helped me to like value like my time and my money and like put less value on like these things that like they're not going to the grave with me you know <laughs> um so like yeah it's like definitely created a disconnect between myself and like other people who kind of like value these things more um i find like it just hard to relate to other people sometimes because like I'll just go to like a, a like hang out with some old friends and like they'll be talking about all these other things and it's like I just I can't relate and I don't care you know what I mean like <laughs> does that sound rude like <laughs> I, I, I know what you're doing. <laughs> um, so like what is your mental state like before you go up? um it kind of varies it, I, it just kind of like depends on what I'm doing if it's like just like a super chill low-key spot like it's just like okay it's like a walk in the park you know what I mean like my mental state is like I'm just chilling you know what I mean but if it's like a like a high profile building um, something that like I've heard maybe other people have had trouble with or like maybe no one's really done before um, like I'm like kind of like in the zone like on top of it like alert and aware of like everything you know um and just like trying to like minimize conflict or like any sort of interaction with like people who who like might get me in trouble in some way you know um, as mentioned just rooftoping itself is complicated but being a muslim woman who's rooftoping is probably more complicated than usual if i'm right yeah. um Especially if you're a Muslim woman who wears the hijab and is visibly known to be Muslim. Tell me about that experience and if any issue that you face. 
Um, yeah, so there's a lot of complications with being Muslim and like a, Muslim, a visibly Muslim rooftopper. Um, like a lot of people don't say this, right? Um, but there's this like constant like background thought or like association. Like some people are afraid to say it out loud, um, but there's this like subconscious association with like, you know, what I'm doing and like terrorism, you know? Um, and that has come across um, in the way like some authority figures have treated me. Um, uh, in the questions that they've asked um, versus like because I never go by myself right um, I find like it's I think it's too risky to go by myself because I can't trust the intentions of anybody else I might encounter while I'm doing this alone like as a woman but also as a Muslim woman like I I can't trust it I don't know if they're gonna like take it some other way it's always better to have somebody with you who can like be like you know vouch for you or say something or like look out in that sense um but like i've also gotten caught with other people right because i don't go by myself so in that incidence like i see how like various authority figures like treat me versus how they treat the other explorers that i'm going with whether they're male, male or female like the treatment towards me is like completely different um some people have like taken my phone and looked through it and not taken other, like my fellow explorers phone some people have like directly been like you like referring to like my hijab like me and my hijab like should not be doing this because of you know and they won't really explici explicitly say like 9-11 or anything like that i get asked if i love america and other people don't you know um i have homeland security showing up at my door because people like you know in other cities don't want an embarrassment on their hands just in case they think i have other intentions you know what i mean um and like so that's like from authority figures but then also from like the general public like when i put stuff out on like tiktok most especially um i get like in every video there's at least one comment about like bombs or 9 11 or terrorism or like just islamophobic behavior in general you know um and then from my fellow explorers, like uh, some people are actually like afraid to explore with me um, because, or like prefer not to explore with me because they feel that um, it might be difficult to have a successful mission if I'm involved looking the way I look. Um, and then on top of that, there's that whole just like, I just have like a weird fear of like, you know, I don't ever want this to be used in any way that could harm like the Muslim community. Um, and I don't want it to look bad for us. Uh, I don't want people to be scared that there's a Muslim woman on top of a building and be like, you know, is this another 9-11? You know what I mean? Um, so I feel like the more they see me, the more they it kind of like counteracts that subconscious thought. But at the same time, like I do have to deal with like a lot of these things in order to fight that, you know. Speaking of being a Muslim woman and like doing something for the community, how do you differentiate what the freedoms are for Muslim women from what you do? Um, what are? Oh. I, I don't understand that question. Can you clarify? So. Bad just because of what you're doing. Yeah. What, what would you say? Like even the Muslim community would definitely say something about the what you're doing about climbing like these tall skyscrapers and stuff. How would you explain that to them that it's something? How, would you explain that that it's something that you could do as a Muslim woman or like how do you go about that? Like, are, are you asking me, like, if people don't feel like they can do this because they are Muslim women, how would I encourage them? Encourage them or, like, explain to other people who think that you can't do it just because you're a Muslim woman. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, actually, that question, like, I've... 
I think that relates more to just me being female versus being a Muslim woman because a lot of the comments that I've gotten um, from people on that front like I didn't know a woman could do anything like this or I've never seen a female rooftopper or I didn't know a woman could climb you know what I mean um, are, are more related to just me being a woman versus me being you know visibly Muslim um, and like those two identities are like very closely tied you know for me um, so I guess like maybe kind of go just hand in hand that like um, honestly like we could really just do whatever we want you know what I mean provided that like like women can do whatever they want you know um, we're probably gonna get it harder probably gonna get a lot of backlash on some fronts and um, you know just like some like sexism a lot of sexism um, and just like di a little bit of different treatment you know and, and that's okay it just means that you just got to push harder until things are equalized until like things until people change their ideas about what it means to be a woman and what women can do and that also applies to like what it means to be a Muslim woman and what Muslim women can do right except like being a Muslim woman it's like we're guided by faith so like it's like okay well is this the right thing to do in terms of like falling under Islamic gu guidelines you know um, that's like just one extra thing we just have to talk about but it's it's generally the same right yeah. and so like what can and can't you do as like a Muslim woman in rooftop like what depicts that and is rooftop allowed in our religion? I think it's allowed I think it just depends on how you're going about it um because obviously like in the Quran the Sunnah there's no like nothing explicit about this right so you just have to kind of look at is it you know breaking anything else that the Quran and the Sunnah has said right um, and I feel like it might be a little bit of a gray zone um, this is something that I've like thought about um, I'm not I haven't really found like a come to a conclusion you know what I mean um, I do have like certain like things I don't do because I feel like it's wrong to do because of my faith um, like for example some people like open doors um, that are locked through lock picking or crowbars or credit carding or something else right um, I am like strongly against opening closed doors <laughs> like if it's closed I don't touch it like all right I, I put all the work to get up there and if it just happens to be locked and it, it's okay you know it's okay um, so I think like with me like I prefer to like go towards like explore things that are just more like I know are open like construction sites are like everything's open you know what I mean we could just walk in and just like you know just go climb a crane you know not encouraging anybody to do this but like it's just like I feel like it's more open and I don't have to like I guess like do some of the things that I f would find kind of risky in like n would find to be not okay in my faith you know um, and yeah so I don't like open locked doors I don't like break anything I don't like take anything from anywhere you know like some people like they just like eat people like people other people's food while at buildings or like construction sites they'll just like take someone else's water but like I, I don't care if I'm dying of thirst but I will never you know what I mean um, like take some someone some something else from like a building um, uh, or like some people like take souvenirs you know um, like sometimes it's like construction hats or like floor pans or whatever but like I'll take pictures but I won't take anything else you know what I mean um, and that just like ties very closely like to, to my faith about like you know that's stealing you know um, uh, and um, yeah just like think little things like that <laughs> Like, and don't. Okay. So the culture that 
we live in with social media so prominent in our lives, how can we live doing what we want while still holding our Muslim values? What are the values? I, I think you kind of like explained it. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think like it's okay to like put ourselves out there. You know what I mean? I think it's really important that we do put ourselves out there as visibly Muslim women or just like Muslim women in general because like representation is so important you know like growing up like I never saw a Muslim woman on the media um, it was just like yeah I just never saw a Muslim woman like in public out on the media or like in, in television or like anything like that and like now we do see that right we see that possibility because a lot of times what happens is that people don't think a lot of people don't think they can do something unless they see someone else like them do it right um and like i'm not saying like i want to be that person that encourages other people to do this i don't encourage anybody to do what i do it's like super risky and dangerous in so many ways um but I'm more about like just encouraging and inspiring people to just get out there and do something. You know what I mean? Step outside of your comfort zone. Put yourself out there and do the right thing. Speak up about things. You know, use your platform for good. Um, that is my intention with like putting myself out there. And um, and I think like as long as you're like putting yourself out there like on social media within the guidelines of Islam, like you're not like acting in ways that you shouldn't be acting or dressing in ways that you shouldn't be dressing or anything like that I think it's okay you know what I mean as long as there's good intention behind it I think it's okay um, I'm not trying to be a symbol for Muslim women I'm not trying to be like an example or a role model for anybody. Um, and like I have had a lot of people like reach out. Um, and like of those people, like there are visibly Muslim people in that subset or just Muslim people in general in that subset. Uh, but like I always tell everybody that like I don't ever want you to do what I'm doing specifically. But I do want you to go out there and live your best life, whatever that best life for you is. You know what I mean? And sometimes I like living your best life just takes a little bit of courage um, and inspiration and motivation and like just stepping outside of your comfort zone. And I, and I hope that and like addressing fears. Right. And I hope that that's what when people see me like other Muslim women see me or other women or anybody when they see me, I hope that that's what they get from what I'm doing, right? As like they see someone who might not look like they do all these things, right? Um, might not be in the best shape, might not like, you know, they just don't look like they do these things, but they're really kind of just out here tackling fears, addressing different things, using their platform for good, um, stepping outside their comfort zone to, to kind of just do more. Um, online and offline and things like that and I hope that's what people can take from what I'm doing and so what were some internal struggles that you faced with your religion oh, or with rooftop in general um well so first when I started rooftopping um a lot of like a few years ago um it was just like I recognized that it would just be immediately easier if I wasn't wearing my hijab, right? Because like part of rooftopping is like going into buildings you don't really necessarily belong, right? And a lot of the buildings I end up going into are like buildings where like rich white people live, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I clearly do not look like I belong there. <laughs> um, and like uh if i can't like make it past the lobby or like the bottom floor you know it's hard to get to the roof right that's like the biggest challenge and a lot of times like i have like i have gotten turned away at the door um and my friends have gotten through you know what i mean um uh so like i have like considered like just wearing a wig sometimes or <laughs> i know this sounds weird but like you know uh and like even just like taking off my hijab you know what i mean like 
I thought about maybe just like taking off in general uh, and experiencing that or just like you know just taking it off while I'm exploring you know and like is it like <laughs> I feel like I don't know like like this hobby was just that like so important to me that I was actually considering taking off my hijab you know what I mean like it's kind of it sounds weird to say that but like it's impacted me so much you know um but I'm glad I didn't and I'm glad I stuck it out because like I feel like I got something greater from it for sticking it out and not like taking it off and not like giving in to like how much easier it would have been um if I kind of looked like everybody else um but during that time what made you like keep it on like know you want to keep it on so because it was basically like I had to reevaluate if I actually believed in this in like the hijab in my faith you know what I mean um did I feel that the hijab was necessary for me to wear if it was required if I should be wearing it that's something I had to reevaluate um and then I also had to like reevaluate like did I actually believe in my faith did I actually believe in God did I actually like believe in Islam as the religion for me as the true religion you know as truth um and and rooftoping and the experiences that I've had with this hobby only strengthened that because like I feel like when you're up there and you're kind of by yourself and you're seeing like all of this and you're seeing the sun rise it's literally like God just presenting himself to you like here I am you know what I mean here I am and I've done all of this for you to like experience and to see and um, to reflect on and to remember, you know, just to remember God. Um, I don't get any much. <laughs> um, so that, um, and then also just like other experiences with like, you know, nothing's coincidence. Especially when you're in a situation where someone seeing you down the street could like change everything. You know what I mean? Or like you walking down the wrong stairwell could like lead you to getting caught and arrested and things like that. Um, and I just think about like those experiences where like, you know, I've been able to get in and out like easily and it was made easy for me um, because like these things were meant for me. You know what I mean? Like I was doing one spot um, and the person I was exploring with was super anxious about getting out of the spot. You know, we had got up, we had explored, we caught sunset and it was nighttime. We we're getting back out. Right. But like, just because you got up doesn't mean like you're going to be out safely, you know? Um, and so the person was very anxious about getting out because he had been here before and uh, he had gotten caught and he had not had a good experience and like had like been chased by security and things like that. So he was like, yeah, I'm, uh, I feel like, you know, we might like there's an increased chance of that happening, you know, because we were leaving after hours. Um, after like the building was like the office building was closed and things like that um, so we literally like tried so many other different ways to get out than the way he ended up going out the first time and every way we tried it was closed every way we tried it was closed it was not possible cameras here and there alarms on doors etc not possible we had literally no choice but to go out the same way he ended up going out like the first time and like subhanallah like I can't even tell you like we went out the whole lobby was empty right security normally sits there and they would have seen us but security in this exact moment we were going out we're right outside the door looking the other way you know what I mean like things could have gone so differently if if they were still sitting in the lobby if they had just been looking in our direction you know what I mean um, and it's like things like that just like these little things like that like you notice the timing of different things you notice the position of different people you notice like how people act in different ways and you think about if they were if they had seen me if they had just turned their head if they had been a little bit closer if they had you know just like not left the building or like uh, there's just like a, so many little things like this like 
you can't just not think like, you know, like there's something greater at hand here in control of these successful explorers, you know? And yeah, I've gotten caught in things like that. And like, yeah, like it's, it's, it's whatever is meant for me. These successful explorers are meant for me, but also these like explorers that where I get caught, you know, they're also meant for me and for other reasons, you know what I mean? And it's just like reflecting on all of that. That's like, yeah, God exists and God is out here looking out for me. And, um, and he's like, you know, showing me that he's here, he's present. Um, and so just seeing that constantly just only strengthened my faith so much. Um, and just like doing my own like research and my own like learning and things like that and taking different classes and like whatever and just like increase my desire to just learn more um, really just strengthen my faith um, so last two questions other than rooftop what is your normal day like are you going to school working on something or I saw like you had another page I'm not sure what it was exactly about but if you have any other things so outside of rooftopping, um, I'm a freelance photographer and videographer. Um, I shoot a lot of different things, like sometimes real estate and architecture. Um, sometimes uh, I work in the car scene. Um, and um, sometimes I just like create content for other people and like other edit like other people's content. Um, so that's like kind of what I do, you know, like on my free time. Um, I think I fear what comes after death, <laughs> you know, like, um, I used to fear heights, you know, um, not as severely as a lot of other people do, but it was very minor for me, but it was still there. Um, and I feel like I've tackled that by just continuing to put myself out there. Um, and just like increasing exposure and things like that because like I kind of came to a point where it's like I don't feel like I'm getting the full experience if I'm not out here outside of my comfort zone you know what I mean um, uh, and there's not like a lot of things I fear you know outside of that I think like this hobby has kind of like tackled a lot of different fears for me um, it's helped me handle like learn how to handle like anxieties for the future um, especially because of how it brought me closer to religion and things um, and to deal with other things um, as well um, so yeah at this point like I don't really want to hurt anybody I think my other, only other greatest fear like associated with this hobby is just having it being used or seen in the wrong way um, and just like, I don't know, maybe the government kind of using my position or something in like a way that like is very harmful, you know? Um, like I'm not like a conspiracy theorist or anything like that, but like, you know, I've, I've met people who've experienced some things um, in the Muslim community, you know? Um, like we've dealt with a lot, especially after 9-11 and like just like FBI is being like installed into different communities and like being like spying on people at the mosque and like things like that and like marrying into families and like whatever. Um, I don't ever want to be like used in a bad way. You know what I mean? Like because I do this, um, I think like that is my greatest fear. Um, and aside from that, just like, just not hurting or harming people and just like what comes after death, you know? <laughs> Uh, no, not really. <laughs> and so for the last one, we're just going to go over like um, the introduction to say like, I am Minaji, I'm a Muslim group talker, that's about it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Minaji and I'm a visibly Muslim roof topper. Thank you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was long. That was cool. <laughs>